Hi there, Daisy here. So as a beginner, we need basic supplies. One or two crochet hooks and a skein of yarn. Pick that yarn to be an acrylic one and that uses a thicker hook like five millimeters or 5.5. And if you buy a set from Amazon that has a multiple crochet hooks and a little bit of yarn, you're good to go. For example, some of the crochet hooks come in big sets like that or in a fancy pouch with different sizes. So pick whatever works for you. My yarn calls for five millimeter crochet hook. And if in your set you have a six millimeter, that will be handy too. Usually the patterns ask you to start with a magic loop or a slip knot. So the slip knot is pretty easy. You wrap your yarn so that you make a loop and they crisscross, the strands crisscross. So you pick one of those, I usually pick the end, and make that so it goes into the loop. You pull it gently and then you tighten this loop here so one side can easily move. This could be as well the side that easily moves, but this side could easily move as well. And then you start with your crochet hook. If you cannot make this loop, that's where the bigger hook comes in handy. So put your hook down and just make a square knot around your hook. Not too tight, but not too loose either. If you make it too tight, that bigger size helps with that because we'll be switching to the five millimeter that the yarn calls for. All right, so you make that square knot here, you tighten it, and now you can remove that big crochet hook and switch to your five millimeter. And then there are different ways of wrapping your yarn around your fingers, but if you don't want to go on that, to that step yet, then you just leave some yarn, a longer space between your fingers and your hook, and you just wrap that yarn around your finger. That's all it is. With your other, with the rest of your fingers, you're gonna have to hold your work. So with your thumb and your middle finger, you're gonna have to hold that knot and part of this tail so they stay stretched and you can move your hook carefully. So there you have even a little bit of space between your hook and the loop so your hook can easily move through it. And that's what helped create that bigger hook, helped us create an extra space. And you will be letting your yarn go from around your finger as much as you need. So your first position of your hook is the hook pointing towards the ceiling. So that's how you're gonna be grabbing the yarn from under. And then when you're ready to pull your new loop, you twist your crochet hook down so now it faces the table or the ground and pull through that loop on your hook. And then at the same time, you twist your hook so it can look up towards the ceiling. So in your starting position again, and then you can let go of the yarn from your finger. And then again, grab from under the yarn. At the same time, twist down pull through that loop and at the same time twist up and bring your hook in the first position again and again yarn over and at the same time pull through that loop leaving a little bit of yarn and then go back again and now every four or five stitches here on your chain, you have to move your fingers up. So we were right here. So those two fingers need to go up. 
and they need to support and pull my work down. And then again, I go under, twist my hook to go towards the floor and the same time twisting it up to look at the ceiling and I'll give it some more yarn. And that's how I'm going to also control the tension of my loop. If I have too much space here, it, this will make me pull my loop bigger because my fingers just cannot extend that much. But if I tighten that space and I have no space, so make sure you play with that length as well. If you need to just stop again, and wrap your finger that works as well make sure those fingers as well work for your project and again move your fingers up so one two three stitches move your fingers up one two three stitches move your fingers up one two, three stitches. Make sure that you move your and twist your hook up and down, up and down. And then I'm gonna twist more yarn on my finger. Make sure I twist my hook. Now twist up, grab yarn, twist down, move my fingers up grab yarn, twist my hook down, twist my hook up, yarn over, pull through the loop facing down, now face your hook up, yarn over, pull a loop facing down, now face up, and now move your fingers up your chain. So you will get a chain and this is the base of almost all projects. So once you master that chain, it's, it's an easy game from here. Your stitches may look a little bit different as a, at, at first, but that's okay. Look, this one looks a little bit bigger compared to the other ones, but that tension comes with time and practice. So just keep going and you actually have your first project done that is a bracelet. So if you cut the ends and you have enough tail here and leave a longer tail on this side, you can have a lot of friendship bracelets. After you master those basic skills, go and check the next stitch you need to learn, which is a single crochet and after that is a double crochet. And then you're ready for taking new projects in no time. All right, happy crocheting and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Hi there, Tenzi here. In this next lesson, we will learn how to do the single crochet stitch. Now that we have our chain, that's also called foundation chain, we will start with inserting our hook and not counting that loop we have on our hook. We're just going to count the number of stitches we have starting from the one that's next to the hook, this one. And since we cannot go into that loop, into that stitch, because we will start unraveling, we skip that first stitch usually and that stitch is not counted as part of the stitches, it's just a turning chain. So we're not gonna even gonna call it a stitch, we're gonna call it a turning chain. And we in the, in the patterns they usually refer to starting your your row with the second stitch from the chain. So skipping that first turning chain we will start with this one and they look like little V's or like little hearts. We you have three strands here can either go through the next two or you can turn your chain and as you see those bumps pick a bump here go through the bump in this case we'll 
Today we will go through the top strand only of the stitch. So starting from the second stitch from the hook or skipping that turning chain, we'll insert our hook through that under that first strand of your stitch and your hook is still facing up towards the ceiling go under your working yarn twist your hook down so you can pull that loop so draw that loop up on your hook and you leave it there and now we'll yarn over again and grab our working yarn and pull through to both those two loops on our hook and we have a new loop on the hook now we'll go through the next stitch only through that top thread yarn over and draw a loop keep that loop on your hook and then yarn over and draw the next loop through those two loops and this is a single crochet it's it's a very small stitch and it goes a little bit slower since it's so short all right so let's start with our first project all right so my knot here is ready from my first lesson and usually when you're Yarn is recommended that hook size when you do the foundation chain it's better to start with a larger hook because it helps us not to have a curved edge so go back to your bigger hook in this case six millimeters and do 10 chains so we do not count that loop here on our hook and we start counting one two three four five move your fingers up one two three four five and move your fingers up now we can switch to our hook that we'll be working the whole project with in this case my five millimeter hook so right now these are the stitches for my project before we start doing the single crochets, we will chain one more chain, which will be our turning chain. So this is something we will not forget doing at the beginning of each row. So make one more chain, but do not count this as a stitch. Actually, your patterns will tell you, should you count it or should you not count it? So you'll have those numbers there, but if you have an extra stitch here, it's just for that turning chain. And now we're going to go into that first stitch, skipping that first chain, which was the turning, and we'll do our first single crochet. And again, insert your hook into the chain, draw a loop, and draw one more loop going through the first two loops on your hook. And again, insert your hook, yarn over, draw a loop, yarn over, draw a loop. Insert your hook, yarn over, draw a loop, yarn over, and pull through those two loops. And again, insert your hook, yarn over, draw a loop yarn over pull through those two loops insert your hook yarn over pull through and make sure you use your middle finger and the thumb to hold your project in place and one more time insert your hook yarn over pull through insert your hook yarn over pull through 
and the last stitch insert your hook yarn over pull through the loop yarn over pull through the next two loop and now here you can tighten your loop if you did a slip knot and this is our first row now we can turn our loop we will chain one and this is our turning chain we will not count this as a stitch it's just gonna be there to make our next row much easier so now that we see our stitches they all have a little bump and a tiny bit of space between them we will be going in between those spaces and paying attention to that first hole here that first little space we will be going into that first space under the two strands of your stitch insert your hook draw a loop and then yarn over and draw a loop through those two loops again we are looking at the next two stitches and we are finding that top two strands sitting on top of it these two and we will go under them draw a loop and then yarn over and pull through those two loops make sure your thumb and your middle finger help you holding your work and again draw a loop pull through the loops draw a loop pull through the loops and make sure you twist your hook so you don't lose your working yarn oops no we're not going to yarn over here we'll just insert our hook draw a loop and pull through both loops okay so let's keep going insert your hook draw a loop pull through those two loops insert the hook pull a loop draw the new loop through your loops one more time and now we reach the end this is the last stitch here and now we insert through that last stitch and pull through both loops now it's time to turn and then chain our turning chain so chain one and we do not count this one as a stitch so now we have to go into that first stitch so into that base here here we have a little heart we are gonna go through that immediately there and we do and we keep going into each stitch and when we reach the end we do again a turning chain that we do not count as a stitch and there we are at the end and then we chain one and this is our turning chain you can chain and turn or you can turn and then chain it doesn't really matter and then we go into that first when you stretch your first row that previous row you will get this hole so this is your stitch and we keep going and doing single crochets
If you cannot do attention with your fingers, you can always just wrap the yarn around your finger. Chain one, this is your turning chain, do not count it as a stitch, and then go immediately into that first stitch. And we keep going till we have a coaster. chain one, this is your turning chain, and we go into that first stitch. Once you're done, you pull your last loop and now you can cut your yarn just like that and then you can go in the back side the, the side you decide will be your your wrong side since we crocheted on both sides our both sides are exactly the same so you pick one side which is wrong, the wrong one and then you just weave in your end in the stitches all the way and the beginning row as well and you're all done and you have your first coaster. So the next stitch we're gonna learn is the double crochet. You can go and check the next video and in the meantime practice 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 Daisy here let's start with our third lesson we're gonna learn to do the double crochet so we're gonna start with a slip knot or you can tie your yarn around the a bigger hook and make a square knot there you can wrap your yarn around your finger as well and make a foundation chain of 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we can switch to our hook, insert your new hook, and then we will chain two, which will be our first stitch. This time we will be counting our chains as a stitch. And into that third stitch from the hook, we will start doing our double crochets. The double crochets use one yarn over that's waiting on our hook. Then we insert our hook and draw a new loop. And now we have three loops on our hook. We yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. We have a new loop on our hook. And then we yarn over and pull through the next two loops. So we actually pull through two loops at a time. So that stitch is a little bit longer than the single crochet. And then we yarn over again. We go into the next foundation chain yarn over and pull through the next two stitches yarn over and pull through the next two stitches one more time yarn over one time insert your hook through the foundation chain yarn over pull through the foundation chain yarn over and pull through the first two loops and yarn over and pull through the next two loops we keep working like this till the end of the row. Yarn over, 
insert, draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert, yarn over and draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, draw a loop, pull through, pull through. Yarn over, insert your hook, draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Make sure you use your thumb and your middle finger to help you hold your project. And into the last chain. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. So now we are ready for the next row. So now we turn, we chain two, which we do count as a first stitch. And since those stitches are stacking on top of each other, that's why we will not gonna be going into that first hole we have here. Although it feels like we wanna go there, we will not, otherwise we'll be increasing. So we will go into that next stitch. So this first stitch from the previous row, it got its new stitch on top. So now we're gonna go into the next stitch, which actually this is its loop. So we're gonna yarn over, draw a new loop, but going into that under that V, draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And then into the next one, yarn over, go into the next space, that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over pull through so we did three stitches from the previous row and we have three stitches on the top row and we'll keep going till the end of the row yarn over go under the stitch here Draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert your hook, draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, draw a loop, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over. Insert your hook, draw a loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through. And now that we are reaching towards the end, we have actually two stitches left. That one that's like a regular double crochet and the chain that we do count as a double crochet. So we will go on to the top of the stitch here, draw a loop, pull through and pull through. But we do, however, have one more stitch here, that chain that sometimes gets lost there, but it does exist. So yarn over, and if you look at it on this side, it does look like a chain. So we will go and we'll grab two of the strands of this chain here right on top and we'll do a regular double crochet. This way our piece will grow with parallel sides instead of growing bigger. And starting the bottom row with a larger hook will prevent it from, sh from that uh, chain shrinking a little bit and our P 
piece going and looking like a trapezoid. And now it's next time the next row. So we will chain two. And you can chain two and turn, or you can turn and chain two. So we're gonna make sure we start with the second stitch here because we already did our first double crochet. So we'll go into that second stitch. And as you can see, this, we are not gonna go into the base of this stitch. And then we're gonna go and do the same thing till we reach again that chain we did. So make sure you do not forget about it or you can put a stitch marker. All right, so let's go till the end. Just so we practice again that last double crochet. That's actually our chain. And you can always go and count your stitches, but in when you do projects like blankets that are too big to keep cutting, counting all the time making sure you don't forget that last stitch which is actually your chain here we're gonna grab you actually have three strands there we're gonna grab two of them yarn over grab the two of them yarn over pull through yarn over pull through. And now it's time for the next row. So again we turn and we start with our first stitch here which will be chain two. And we can go ahead and put a stitch marker here which will remind us when we get to it that we need to do a stitch in it. And we keep going. We're gonna skip that first place that we feel that we want to go in, in there, but we will not. If you feel the need to help with your other fingers here, that's okay. You can hold with your thumb these two loops here so they don't move, so they don't become too big or small and go into your stitch and still holding them, you, you draw your next loop. But in order to see better, I do not use my thumb there, but when I do crochet, I do control my tension like that. So here, holding my loops so they don't move much, I draw my next loop. And then I'm letting go of the second loop only, but I'm still holding to my first one because I did a good size of it there. So I'm still hold holding to my second loop. And then I have a new loop here. And now my last loop can go and finish the stitch. All right, so here I'm holding my loops, drawing my new loop. I'm gonna give it one loop from the ones that I've been holding, pull through those two, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So here I will not forget that last chain and I will go into it too. And now I'm ready for my next row. And then I chain two and I'll put a stitch marker into that chain so I do not forget about it. And then I'll go into the next stitch. So this is done. I'll go into this one. And I have a face scrubby here or a coaster. It can be any project you want it to be. 
and I can stop with my project just right here. And here I reached my, my stitch marker that's telling me that I need to go in there. I can put it down. And it's actually holding my stitches in place. I need a yarn over. Draw a loop, pull through, pull through. And that's it. And you can cut your yarn. I give it one more chain here, just like that. And here, those stitch markers can help you keep track of your loops. And that's all for doing double crochets. Keep practicing and um, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.